up cancer gang welcome to my channel tarot by the intuitive teacup this is going to be a general tarot reading specifically geared towards cancer rising so if you are not a cancer rising i highly encourage you to watch your rising sign first uh you can always find that information out online very easily just google uh your rising sign um of course anyone and everyone is welcome into this reading though just because i'm using my zodiac wheel here more geared towards uh rising signs this time around okay uh, as always, you are responsible and accountable for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice or guidance. Please only take away what resonates, what motivates, what inspires. Release the rest. Assume it's going out to someone else. All right, let's do it. Let's go around for cancer. What can I tell cancer this week? All right, let's do that. It's a new beginning. Got a new lease on life, cancer. <clears throat> Ooh, Ace of Cups coming in here. Uh, Okay, some of you are getting engaged, um, or, or uh, okay, let's just start there, because you have a lot of action happening in your seventh house. Um, bottom of your deck is Queen of Swords, so um, something involving good judgment, but also, um, gosh, the Queen of Swords has a lot to it. I wanted to say something with uh, Venus energy, because we have to remember it's very connected to Libra. So Libras want to relate, Libras want balance, or, uh, Libras focus a lot of attention on the other. So with that this week, you may be stepping into a very new chapter. Um, and for some of you, it could be severing a connection, whether it's business or not, but if that is the case, it would feel like, oh, thank God I'm freed. Others of you, you are making possibly a decision to involve with another in a more legal way. Um, which it's like there's a spring in your step about this new chapter of life there's a culmination happening in your seventh house of partnerships with that full moon in capricorn uh this coming week and so again with that there's this beautiful blessing involved there's this overflowing energy of love and, and just really positive energy and not only that in terms of your eighth house which is your house of it's what we call the house of sex and death it's also merging of partnerships um especially in terms of money a lot of you may end up uh, forming a connection, uh, a connection ship. That's funny. Uh, forming some sort of new connection with a partner that is now even more solidified because you're merging accounts, you're merging bank accounts, you're merging houses specifically, right? Four of Wands. Oh, Cancer, this feels really nice. This feels really good. All right, so let's just look. At, let me kind of get the picture here with the tarot cards. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, happy birthday, Cancer. I can't believe it took me this long to tell all you guys that. My Cancer gang out there. Uh, it's your birthday season, babies. I uh, hope you enjoy it. It looks like you you already have some positive things coming in here. So uh, let's just look at your house of uh, self, your house of ego and identity. Again, this is where we have the fool, which is uh, hope springs eternal. It's very lighthearted, and it's being balanced with equal amounts of energy. Um I don't see this being a problem for you, but because we we like to see balance in terms of what's happening uh, opposing our different houses, just make sure you're not, uh, make sure you do look before you leap. With this, there could be an extra buoyancy in your nature right now where you might not be thinking things through entirely. Again, I don't see anything like, oh my God, don't. Like, I don't do fear-based readings anyway. The only thing I do see is because Jupiter is making some sort of positive aspect um, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, buoyancy, abundance, especially spending money you don't have on travel. Just make sure you're not just like, it's my birthday, whatever, I'll do it, because there may be repercussions later for that. Um, again, these are not fear-based readings. This is just some advice or guidance if it makes sense for you in your life right now. <clears throat> That being said, Jupiter, which is the planet of fortune and good luck, does have a very positive connection, a positive aspect, we call it in astrology, to the sun uh, being your, your core essence, your vitality, your ability to thrive and express yourself, your ability to grow, has a really positive connection with the sun sitting in your house of ego and self and identity. So you may just have sort of a stronger, um, uh, a more confident stride as you walk into this, uh, these next coming weeks. You also have Venus, the planet of love, and again, Libra-esque energy, balance, communication, harmony, also money traveling through your first house. Um, so it might be a good time to put yourself out there um, in terms of making uh, connections, whether it's business or uh, romantic, because it seems like whatever is receiving your offer or contemplating your offer, it seems like it's being met with, with a lot of warmth and um, optimism, I would say. 
Some of you, this absolutely feels like engagement. So obviously that wouldn't come out of nowhere, right? If you're single and looking, it's, it's probably not going to be engagement in terms of marriage. But for others of you, if you've been in a very strong uh, partnership or or that just seems like that could be in the cards for you, I mean, maybe some, some of you may be proposed to for your birthday and it starts this really beautiful, lighthearted chapter. And again, there's a merging of bank accounts. Uh, this is sort of an untraditional tarot card that, that's specific to this deck. But with that, we see generations, we see legacy, we see the grand mother and the mother and the grandkids and so that's what I mean this could be the start of you actually building a family moving in with your significant other long-term plans uh, yeah in turn and even in your 11th house of long-term plans there's an offer here uh, it is a page so I mean pages are messengers right um, so I, I will say this I think there's a positive opportunity that comes your way but it may force you to reassess your plans in terms of your long-term vision. Um, so that's not a punch in the gut. That's not at all a reason for you to for you to feel deflated. You have really fantastic opportunities here, but there's a slight adjustment. <clears throat> and it may have to do with travel. It may put you at a distance from a job or from a family or put you at a distance from something that you are like, oh, am I ready to do this? Interesting, interesting. Um, don't let fear drive the bus, right? For better or worse, you know, opportunities come around for a reason. So even if initially you're kind of like, mm, I don't know if that's for me. Well, you have to trust your gut. You have to trust your instincts and your intuition. You're incredibly intuitive. But I would encourage you to not lean into fear, particularly around travel opportunities. But I do want to, uh, again, reiterate what I said. Just be careful with how you're spending your money and how fast you're spending your money, particularly with Mars going through your second house of uh, income and finances. Um, Mars is just, it's all about action. It's about speed. It's about doing things fast and, and being very headstrong about it, not always considering the opposite of, of Mars energy, Venus, which is again about harmony and partnership. Mars is about the self, the individual. So I, I, this sounds a bit trippy, but Mars isn't going to consider what spending money is going to do for other areas of life. Mars is like, I want the thing, so I'm gonna spend it. It's very self-focused. Um, so with that coming in through your money, you're probably buying things for yourself, I would say, and there's nothing wrong with that cancer, right? It's your birthday. But with that, I, again, I'm just wanting to say, because what's opposing that is like, <laughs> don't put yourself in money jail because of it, right? Spending money you don't actually have because you're making decisions out of a, a impulse, really. Okay. <clears throat> Others of you, you may be encur being encouraged to save something for the long term. If this isn't generational in terms of family, it could be long term planning if you're thinking about buying a house or moving residences in the, in the near future. Again, there's a balance of what you're doing with this Mars energy in your house of finance, are you putting a lot of action into financial planning? If that's the case, fantastic. Uh, just just watch your watch like your trigger finger with the, the credit card and all that. Anyway, okay, that's your business. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into that anymore. Here we go. What else can I tell you? All right, so in your fourth house, there's a lot of action and movement. Um, eight of Wands. I'm seeing how this connects to Saturn as sitting in your eighth house. So again, for you, for my Cancer Risings especially, there's a lot of responsibility with the planet Saturn sitting in your um, eighth house of mental health. That's important. But also your house of merging via sex, via death. <laughs> I know, that's, that's a little bit trippy. But also in, in terms of resources financial resources in the merging of that saturn as i have reiterated many times is the planet of responsibility um it is sort of it has a more authoritarian nature where it it kind of shows you the areas where you need to improve and do better and over time very likely you will improve those skills but you may either be struggling with um just like a, a small belts of depression or I, i'm always getting like guilt or remorse about spending habits or again mental mental health uh, there, there just may be some sort of important lessons or responsibilities with that now <clears throat> but for some of you it's more the responsibility of joining partnerships again with that cul uh, culmination full moon in your seventh house
because you're no longer just considering how earning and spending money impacts you independently. There was a freedom to, to just worrying about your finances sim- solely for you. A lot of you, there's an, there could even be a new business collaboration where you're not the one solely in charge of the money decisions. That's what I'm trying to say in a not so eloquent way. So anyway, there, there's, there's good information, there's good exchanges in partnerships, but there is a, a need for you to be much more serious with how you view money and financial relationships in your life. I want to talk about this eight of wands, but I'm not getting much on it. It's actually one of my favorite cards. So I'm just, I'm trying to see how this is playing out for you. Something about um, uh, possibly, a, okay, so you may be moving, moving households. You may be uh, shuffling or reordering items in your home, especially trying to uh, sell old items to allow greater mobility if you had the opportunity to move. Because for some of you, there's new property or there's new residency or there, there's something about um, yeah, land, property, homes, stability. That there's, there's a suggestion for you to be able to move quickly should that opportunity come to you because you might not see it coming. Okay. In your in your twelfth house, um, uh, which which does actually have a lot to do with all things hidden as well as information that you might not be privy to, there is information. Especially, it may have to do with the past. It might not. Um, but I I think just when you get comfortable in some sort of setting, there's news that disrupts it. But again, this news or this offer. It may be, I'm almost getting like an internship or something to test the waters with something. Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. I think it would have a positive impact on your long-term business or career goals, but it comes very quickly, very unexpectedly, or very fast. But it seems like you're chosen out of the many. Like, especially if... See, this this is where I'm stumbling because part of me wants to say you don't see this coming and, and yet would you know that you're in competition for this thing? It's I'm almost getting this message of like you're chosen out of the many to do this thing. And maybe these are two different opportunities. I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but... Yeah, there's like a new work family in your future or close collaborators. And you seem to be either leading the group of them or you stand out among the rest. It could be that this, I don't know, maybe this week you put forth or submit a really great idea for that work project and yours gets chosen. And so for some reason or another, you're elevated in, in the coming weeks in terms of your in terms of your work patterns or your work efforts, your, your, your daily work life and routines, you seem to be I, I just keep hearing, you know, picked among the group. There's something about you, it elevates you, and there's, you, this is an odd way of phrasing it, but you know there's a lot of eyes on you, so there's a, I think you feel extra pressure to put out a stellar performance. Does that make sense to anyone? And this could also be on social media, too. There's something about, I don't necessarily think it's arrogance or cockiness. I mean, it might be, right? You know, you're human. But there's something that you know that everyone's watching you. Hold on. So how is this? There's a new contract. There might be a Libra watching you as well. You need to be very uh, cautious this week that you're following the rules, That uh, something about the law. I mean, this could be something as silly as getting a speeding ticket, especially especially with Mars. <laughs> Cancer. No, there is, it's really interesting. There's something about in your third... Oh, I just heard a ding. That usually says to me that's important. Something about in your third house... Okay, this could be a speeding ticket. The law is showing up because third house has to do with uh, short distance travel. 
there's something with the laws coming in and it puts you in an awkward position that impedes your freedom. I, I'm not saying you're literally going to jail, but I mean, look at the, the symbolism of these two cards going up against each other. This is the law and then this is like not adhering to, to something. And it's like putting yourself in an awkward space. What's interesting about the Eight of Swords though is typically though it's a self-imposed prison. <clears throat> so I guess I'm just putting that out there for you to think about. Are you... I'm even going to flip it this way. Are you adhering too strictly to a code of conduct that you've created for yourself that actually you're meant to liberate yourself from it? Interest? Yes. Are you guys hearing those dings? I'm sorry my phone isn't on silent, but I actually love the confirmation there. There could be a generational or a family code of conduct or rules or something that has been carried through the generation and it's not to say it's bad i would just offer there may be a, a turning point where something tips the scales where you start to realize it worked for everybody but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you and by recognizing that and getting out of this i have to do it this way or i have to do you understand what i mean there's a liberation that, that, that comes with that but i i do want to maintain uh, speeding tickets i don't know why that's coming up so strong this week but there's or if it doesn't have to do with that, it has to do with following code of conduct at your place of work because there is extra attention on you. And it might be a attention or a focus that you're not used to. So something could, something could like slip through the cracks that you didn't see. And because there's like a, a, a microscope on you, or however you want to say it, that thing that slipped through the crack, everyone can see it. And again, I don't do fear-based readings, but there's there's just something, I don't know, there's something about following the rules at work right now. It's it, For a lot of you, there's a need to move away from a system of thought that has been placed on you in a more, especially regarding a sibling or a family dynamic, you seem to be moving away from that. At work, it's where it's the opposite message. At work, it feels like, I don't know, there's a certain way to do something, and because maybe you're, maybe, you know, it's, maybe it's your birthday week, right? Maybe that's what this is. Maybe there's just a lot of attention. You think, oh, you know, maybe I can clock out like a few minutes early. No one will notice. They will. That, that's sort of what I'm saying. I don't think the repercussions are life-changing, but there's a, a need to adhere to the rules, especially this week. I, I don't know why that is, but it, it's just coming through. It's just coming through. Um, give me one more on this. You seem to be in really good spirits this week. Um, and so if, that's the thing. Oh, yeah, ten of, 10 of Cups at the bottom of your deck? Hell yeah, Cancer. That whole message I had to you of Saturn moving through your eighth house where you may be feeling stifled mentally every now and then, I'm not saying that's not a truth, but you seem to be stepping up to handle that responsibility of Saturn saying, you need to pay better attention to your mental health. You need to cater to your individual needs and make sure you're not burning the candle at both ends or being sacrificial for the needs of others and sacrificing your own health you seem to be understanding that lesson more and more um yeah there's there's something that you you i mean the sun is in cancer so to me that's a really beautiful metaphor there's a spotlight on you in, in the coming weeks and it may it grants you greater opportunity to gain more value in your life yes self-respect value but also from those around you it's like people want a piece of you, Cancer. There, there's just like, there's like a magic vibe to you this weekend. And um, you seem to be showing people how to do it right. Some of you may literally be teachers or mentors or instructors or showing people or uh, like introducing people to the workplace and showing them how to do something. There's, there's a lot of leadership qualities to you this week and a lot of responsibility that comes with that. But you, there's a trust that, that I don't know if it's your boss or whoever has, they're trusting you with important matters. You may be uh, in the running for some sort of man managerial position or something where you would it would impact your bank account and it would there's a lot more recognition and attention. Sorry, okay, I, I know I'm focusing on that. It's just not coming, so I was trying to like work it out. Um, I think whatever happens here motivates you to. 
reassess your strategy and go for it even harder. Uh, and again, it's not about sacrificing your health. It's that you may readjust your strategy ever so slightly because whatever the small win or victory is, it's almost like you love the taste of it. You're like, ooh, that felt good. Being in charge of that group or getting that recognition from my boss. It's on, I don't want to use the word addicted because that's not, I don't think that's a great word, but there's something about it. You get the taste of what could be and you're like, yes, this is what I want. So I'm going to work even harder almost as a way to safety proof or guarantee that I'm going to have more of that in the future. Whatever it is, it feels phenomenal. And so don't be afraid of small mistakes or errors in terms of where you thought you were heading with this because there's a sense of uh, freedom of movement and liberation, but then there it comes with a little bit of reassessment and then you get this recognition or this just this amazing feeling like people are showering you with compliments or attention or praise or whatever it is, loving the product you're selling and something about that helps to inform you about something that you were a little bit shaky on at one point in time. And then it, this leads to the Ace of Cups, so a new opportunity. So if this isn't a new job or a new contract right out the gate, there's some new um, opportunity that comes to you probably at your current workplace or whatever this, however this relates to you. And there's a, there's a pretty big win for the week or for the month, and that motivates you, Mars in your second house, to work on either your financial plans or your long-term strategy of your business goals. And it's like your, your head is really in the game. This is something that we call like the internship or the apprentice. I'm not saying you're literally doing that, but that's what I mean. It's like you're honing in on your craft, you're, master, you're becoming the master of your craft, you're working on your skill set. And so with that, there's a few bumps along the way and periods of adjustment, but it's not bad. It's informing you on what you need to know to succeed this way long term or frequency, stability, uh, longevity, if that makes sense. So it's not just a flash in the pan so that you can experience this elation, this joy, more than just that one isolated incident. Do you understand what I mean? It's like you got a taste of something and you're like, ooh, I love that. I got to learn the recipe so I can make it myself. That's a really great metaphor for, for what I would say is, is going on here. Um, yes, yeah, so the full moon, what else can I tell you? Yeah, what is this? Yeah, Th there is a lot of messages of moving on to the next chapter in your romantic journey. So whether that's moving in together, whether that's getting engaged, whether that is having the wedding, whether that is trying to have children, there, there's definitely a lot of like we're building on a foundation and it's getting more, it's getting more serious, but there's an elation that comes with that. Um, so I don't think it's not something you're stressed about. I think it's just the natural order of things for a lot of you. And so if you're currently single, you know, you, you seem to be sort of assessing who or what you want in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. When you align to what your, your heart truly wants, you find people who kind of match your vibe. Or I would even say you find people who will challenge that a little bit, but in a healthy way where you can grow and develop. Um, so let's talk about that because that's actually the only card you have that I'm I don't even dislike this card. It's just a card of assessment. Sevens are about assessment, trial and error. What do I want? Is this what I thought it would be? Just that's what's showing up in your, your house of dating this week. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's funny. Some of you may have ended up dating someone or connecting with someone, but you feel like it impedes upon your freedom. Freedom to do what? Freedom to work, freedom to go back to school, freedom to see your family, freedom to whatever. A lot of you, it's, it's, it honestly, it just seems like a date, a date or a relationship where you're like, I don't think you would be too sad to lose it, <laughs> to be honest, is sort of what I'm getting. Obviously, these are not, this is not for the people who are in like, more or less going into like the marriage stage of life. Yeah, if you're just like casually dating and looking around, you seem to be the one who's really valuing your independence this week, and that's great. And again, Venus is, is right there. Venus is saying love yourself first and foremost this week. Jupiter, to me here, is saying there's a, a positive opportunity for you to expand out of your independence, but I'm not sure you're wanting to. I'm not sure you are ready to do that. Um, I don't know if you're feeling it, right? Do you know if that's such a Cancerian water, the, the feeler, right? Tell me a little bit more about this. This is not a bad message again. I think this is you assessing 
where does this person stifle me? You may feel like you've connected with someone who's very needy or someone who they text you too much or they're too, they're just, they're too much. And so you're feeling a little bit stifled or suffocated this week. And so, you know, this doesn't mean you're ending it, but it might just be that you need to take a week off from this and kind of be able to breathe again. And with that, I think there's some assessment of, I mean, I'm going to say it, this sounds so extreme, but what does this person do to your mental health, right? If something about this connection is making you question your, I don't want to say sanity literally, but you understand what I mean? There's an assessment of why do I feel pinned in a corner with this dating relationship? If this isn't dating, if you have children, this could be um, feeling like your child is very uh, clingy or very needy of you this week. And it's like you just need to, there's something calling you outside of the home. Absolutely. Um, and so there's a need to be able to, to serve that role, whatever the universe is guiding you towards. And there's, I, I do want to say it's either your children or your dating prospect right now. You're, you seem kind of on the fence about it. So it's just an area where you may need to adjust things ever so slightly. Because <laughs> you're the player this week, Cancer. Is that right? <laughs> Unless you're dealing with a fire sign in Aries Leo Sag. And I mean, this, it could go the opposite, right? If, if you feel like maybe you're the clingy one or you're shooting off a lot of texts and not hearing back. I don't know. Whatever this is, though, you don't need to stress about it because it's headed in a very positive direction. It might not be with that person, right, who's feeling stifled and suffocated. The Wheel of Fortune says things are expanding in a very positive way. Uh, things are... It's funny, with the Wheel of Fortune, I almost want to say something's going to land in your lap, uh, and it may actually liberate you from whatever this half in, half out, or just lukewarm feelings. I, I'm not sure you're out entirely, but you, there is something about it this week where it's it's putting extra pressure on you to deliver, and you just don't want to. You're just not interested in it this week. So, interesting. Tell me a little bit more about this. There may, Unexpectedly, there may be a fire sign that comes into your life, an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, uh, male or female. Give me one more on this uh, house of dating. A lot of you, you're working on some sort of creative project, and again, you're in that sort of... Um, trial and error your your experimentation your exp <laughs> and that goes for relationships too your creative energy there's a lot of uh, i don't know is that what i want what if i fix this what if i change that and that's good that's good cancer it's part of the process you can't rush the process as much as mars may want to the lovers yeah i i think you're sort of at a crossroads of am i in this or not even if you've just been casually dating it could be that this person is sort of approaching you with kind of that I want to put a title on it. And you're like, ooh, like I was good with this being casual, but now that we have to actually, is this a thing? Are we exclusive? I, I do think you're the one for most of you who are kind of like, eh, it's just, I'm not feeling it this week. It might be regarding a Gemini. Yeah, more sevens. How do I feel? What if, if I break this off, what will I lose versus what will I gain? The thing is, I'm not getting clarity, Cancer. So that says to me, this is your job, <laughs> you know, this is your tarot reading. But it's here to tell you, you have to work through this. You have to figure this out. You have to do some emotional assessment on where you're at with this person. Um, again, for most of you, I think it's it's the message that it's good, but I don't know if I'm loving it. I like this person, but I don't know if I'm in love with them. You seem to be doing a lot of assessment. You might be very worried about hurting this person, um, but also you can't let that stifle, again, your ability to to speak your truth. That That's really important here, too. Yeah, with Mercury in your 12th house, there may be information you're hiding or concealing from this person and for most of you i think it's like the nail in the coffin that you you don't want to be the bad guy which i totally get for others of you i think there's information and i think this could happen uh in multiple ways there may be news you're not sharing with this person especially about a i don't know if i can do this anymore there may also be unexpected news coming uh, that someone is looking to connect with you but they know that you're taken or they think you're taken. So again, all the more reason if you're in a connection that you're truly, you don't see potential in it and you're unhappy, by staying in it, you may be blocking your blessings for other offers that are trying to come to you. I'm going to end it with that, Cancer. I think that's really important to, to, uh, to think about. Because what's, yeah, especially with a fire sign, that's the second time I've seen a fire sign kind of peeking in, but they haven't quite come out yet. Under this awkward five, right? And all fives are awkward. It's not I'm saying you're awkward, Cancer. Um, but under this kind of, ooh, I need to sort of cut my losses, really that's what it is, 
Under that, you have this really um, passionate, kind of sexy, romantic card. I always associate this card with Leo because he has like a leopard. He's like a leopard cape, which is really funny. And interestingly enough, right under that, you also have the King of Wands. Very Leo-esque energy. It could be any sign, guys, but very strong in fire. Aries, Leo, Sag. However, to get to that, it's under a bit of emotional assessment that I think you're doing with either a current partner or a current prospect. Something about this might involve a Gemini as well. All right, Cancer, that's what I got for you this week. Um, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you next week for more tarot. And happy birthday. Bye, Cancers.